YouTube, it's Cash. This video is part three of my series on lo-fi tape machines. Couldn't have a series on lo-fi tape without featuring the Bell & Howell Iki Language Master. Heimbach made a video about these machines around the time I started filming this series, and I almost omitted this one because I didn't want to follow his video. I decided to do it anyway because I had some additional information to contribute that I thought would be useful. For example, I'm going to show you how to easily splice cards together and to make usable working loops, and I will also share some more unusual applications. As I mentioned in an earlier video in this series, my father owned a business that dealt in the sale and repair of answer machines, telephones, and other magnetic tape-based commercial devices. My father gave me one of these when I was 8 years old, and I played with it until the few cards I had were almost completely worn out. My friends and I would get a laugh out of recording our voices and sounds, and then listening back at slower or faster speeds. This machine was a distant memory for me until I saw the movie Baby Driver in 2017, and then it all came back to me. The main character makes tracks out of samples made with one of these machines. He used a scratching technique similar to scratching a record. He uses recorded recording techniques. Shortly after, I acquired two of these machines to use in my music experiments. This was an educational language tool used by teachers. There's a track for the teacher and for the student. There's also an option to play or record at fuller half speed. The cards were used for writing additional information pertaining to the lesson material recorded. The machine I had as a kid came with a few cards with illustrations on them. There's a built-in speaker and a mic, but it also has quarter and eighth inch outputs and inputs. The volume is also the power switch. The record button needs to be held down to record. You'll see me using some tape in the video to hold the button down to free up both of my hands. The brightness of the light above the record button shows the strength of the input signal. The more you drive it, the more distortion you can get. You can make your own cards using any kind of magnetic tape you can find and carefully gluing it to cardstock. The wider the tape, the less you'll have to be concerned about aligning it with the tape head, so VHS or beta tape work well. There are still card packs for these around, but they are not easy to find and sellers are charging ridiculous money for them on eBay. Now I'm going to show you a way to splice these cards together. You can use this technique to splice fuller parts of cards together. This will also work in a chain or a loop, and you should be able to use this in any properly working version of this machine. Step 1. First tear off some pieces of tape and stick them to something because you'll need both of your hands for this step. Hold the two cards or pieces upright together on a flat surface so the magnetic tape lines up and is level. Overlap the edges by at least a half inch, but not too much because you're just wasting tape. Then tape both sides of the card above the magnetic tape. Step 2. Turn the cards over and cut through both cards at about a 45 degree angle. It is important to cut the angle in this direction because the tape is moving from right to left. This will give you the smoothest transition and is less likely to get hung up in the machine. Step 3. Flip the cards back over and cut away the overlapping piece. Press the splice together so the edges are even and the magnetic tape is flat. Step 4. Flip over one more time, tape the splice from the back, and you're done. I also added a few tape strips under the magnetic tape on the front just to make it smoother in parts because I made a large loop and I'll be running it through two machines at the same time, but this is not necessary. In this demo, I'll be using two machines to create a long delay effect. You'll hear some lo-fi wonkiness because the machines are competing with each other, but see if you can hear where the splices are. In this application, the loop needs to be anchored on either side to keep it moving. I also need to turn both machines on at the same time, so I plug them into a power strip and use the power switch on the strip to engage the machines. I'm using a Kanjo with a clip-on mic and I'm going to drive the heck out of the tape.
In this next demo, I'm going to show another way to take advantage of the mechanics of having a pinch roller directly opposite of the tape head. You can really use any type of magnetic tape material as long as you make it thick enough to make contact with a roller. I experimented with a few things, but I found the use of a 5 and a quarter inch floppy computer disk the most interesting. I first modified one of my machines with an inexpensive combination square. I like using these in my mods and builds whenever I need something to slide and lock into place. It has all the parts I need and I can find them for next to nothing at secondhand thrift or liquidation stores. Having the ability to slide back and forth across the head gives access to more of the recording space on the disc. You can also create bleed as well as sound on sound recording. This is an early example of a disc I was testing. Now I need to make a more reliable disc. I circle cut two layers of manila file folder and glued them to the back of the disc. I also glued a washer to the center hole so it wouldn't travel or tear. Another great thing about these discs is that they have a dot that helps you time your loops. In this demo I'm using a kalimba with the same clip-on contact mic to make some loops. Now I'm going to move the disc around so you can hear how you can use the recording space on the disc. Another cool thing about using discs with this device is that you can mix your samples together and everything kind of fits because it is all recorded within the rotation of the disc, either in full or half time. The result is a combination of lo-fi polyrhythms. First I'll make a simple percussion loop using the same contact mic clipped to my desk. And now I'm going to put everything together. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.